y'all. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Stephanie and I appreciate y'all stopping by. Today, I'll be showing y'all how I made these six B-themed DIY decor pieces to help get your home or patio ready for spring. I hope y'all enjoy the video and if you do, please give it a big thumbs up and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Let's go ahead and jump into the first DIY. For this project, I used one of these cloches and some of this adhesive pearl wrap from Dollar Tree. I started by cutting four strips of the pearl wrap from the bottom of the sheet so that the strips were shorter. When I was cutting the strips, I made sure to cut as close to the pearls as possible so that I wouldn't have the white string sticking out around the top and bottom of the pearls. After I had the strips cut, I placed the pearl wrap around the top of the base of the cloche removing the backing a little at a time so that it was easier to control the placement of the pearls. Once I got to the end of the first pearl strip, I began wrapping another strip to completely go around the top of the base. I used a little white string on the ends of the strips to help keep the first and last pearl evenly spaced. After I had the top completely wrapped, I cut off the two extra pearls. I then repeated this step to add the pearl wrap to the bottom of the base as well. I used Waverly chalk paint and the color ink to paint the base. I also used two of these fake beads that I got a couple of years ago from Amazon. If I can find them again, I will link them in the description box. I used Waverly chalk paint and the color plaster to paint the wings of the bees so that they would stand out a bit more. Next, I cut a circle out of a scrap piece of styrofoam and used hot glue to attach it to the center of the base. I then used some of the reindeer type moss from this moss collection pack that I picked up at Hobby Lobby to cover the styrofoam using hot glue to adhere it to the foam. I wanted to use the reindeer moss from Dollar Tree, but none of my three stores had any and I haven't been able to find it for quite some time. Here is how the base looked once I had all the moss glued onto the styrofoam. To decorate the inside of the cloche, I used two of these buttercup roses and two of these billy buttons, both from Walmart, and two pieces of lavender from this greenery pick from Dollar Tree. I started by placing the two roses in the center using a dab of hot glue to secure them in place. Next, I took one of the billy buttons and placed it behind the roses centered between them, then placed the other one in front of the roses. Then I took two of the lavender pieces and placed one on each side of the billy button behind the roses. I put some hot glue on the abdomen of the first bee and placed it on the billy button in the front of the roses. I then placed the other bee on the tip of the piece of lavender on the left side of the billy button using hot glue to secure it in place. To finish this one up, I replaced the top of the cloche and that's it for this quick little project. I just love how this little cloche turned out. I think it's absolutely adorable. Moving on to DIY number two. For this project, I used one of these small hanging wall planters I picked up at Hobby Lobby for 50% off. I started by using some thick masking tape to tape off a section right under the lip of the planter, leaving just the lip and a small section right in the front exposed. I also made sure to smooth down all the edges to keep the paint from bleeding. I then placed a shorter piece of the masking tape underneath the first piece to help determine the spacing for the next piece of tape. I placed another piece of the masking tape right underneath the shorter piece and made sure to smooth down the edges, then remove the shorter piece of tape so that I was left with only two evenly spaced pieces of masking tape. I wanted the bottom lip of the planter exposed, so I took a utility knife and removed the tape covering the lip so that it could be painted as well. After I had all the masking tape in place, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and painted all the exposed areas on the planter with two coats, including the back, bottom, and a little ways down inside the planter, then removed the tape. Once it was dry, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color maize and painted the other two stripes. This did take a few coats to fully cover the metal. I then repeated these steps to add the black and yellow stripes on this larger wall planter that I also picked up at Hobby Lobby for 50% off. After I had both planters painted, I gave them a quick coat of Minwax polyurethane to help seal and protect the paint since these are made of metal. 
I used some jute twine that I picked up at Walmart and small dabs of hot glue to cover up the seams between the black and yellow stripes and to give these planters a nice finished look. I know hot glue and metal don't play nice, but I didn't want to put anything on these permanently in case I wanted to redo them in the future. So if you wanted a stronger and longer hold, you could use a different adhesive. Here is how the small planter looked once I had all the jute in place. I used one of these oval plaques for the head of the bee. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to completely paint the oval plaque with one good coat. Once the paint was dry, I used more of the jute twine and hot glued it around the outside of the plaque. To make the antennas for the bee, I used two pieces of some soft wire that were about four inches long. I used a pair of needle nose pliers to curl one end of the wire around two times to make the top of the antenna on both pieces of wire. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink and gave the antenna two good coats. Next, I traced out the shape of a bee wing on some regular printer paper to make a template and cut it out. I then used a scrap piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and placed the wing template on top and traced around it to create one of the wings. After I had one wing traced out, I took the template and flipped it over to mirror the first wing and traced it onto the foam board as well. Here is how the wings looked once I had them traced onto the foam board. I then took a sharp utility knife and carefully cut out the wings. I picked this utility knife up from Dollar Tree a few weeks ago and it has quickly become a crafting must-have for cutting out foam board. It glides so smoothly through the foam and it doesn't leave any jagged or ripped edges so I highly recommend picking up one if you don't have one already. Once I had the wings cut out, I took a sanding block and sanded around the edges of the wings to smooth them out and to remove any of the paper that was sticking out so that they had a nice finished look. Next, I applied a small dab of hot glue on the pointed end of one of the wings and placed it against the pointed end of the other wing to attach the two together. I also went ahead and took a piece of clear scotch tape and placed it on the back side of the wings on the tips for a little added security and cut off the excess tape that was hanging over the edge. I then took Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and painted the set of wings front and back with two light coats, making sure not to saturate the paper on the foam so that it wouldn't wrinkle or bubble up. Next, I took more of the jute from earlier and hot glued it around the outside edges of the wings twice and then once in the middle to give them a nice and finished look and to help secure the two wings together. Once I had all the pieces made, I started putting the bee together using hot glue to secure the pieces in place, starting with the head. I placed some hot glue on the top lip right in the center and placed the head piece on top, then applied some hot glue under the bottom part of the head to help secure it in place. I then stood the planter up and reinforced the back side of the head for a bit more security. Next, I laid the wings in place right under the headpiece and used hot glue to secure them in place. I put a dab of hot glue right under the center of the wings and then some hot glue on the headpiece on each side where the wings came into contact with the wood. Finally, I attached the antennas to the back side of the head using hot glue to secure them in place. Once I had both the antennas on the back of the head, I went back and added a generous amount of hot glue over the back side of the wire to secure it a little more. Again, I know hot glue doesn't hold the best on metal, but I put a ton on and it's held up great so far. But you could use E6000 or another stronger adhesive for a stronger and longer hold. I just did not want anything attached permanently. I then repeated these steps to create the pieces for the larger planter, making the wings and antennas a bit bigger so that they would all be proportionate to the planter and hot glued them into place and this adorable bee wall planter set is finished. I am in love with these wall planters. I went ahead and placed some spring florals from Walmart into them and this is how they turned out. I can't wait to hang them out on the wall on my covered porch. Let's move on to the third DIY. For this project, I used one of these 8-inch wreath rings that come in a 2-pack from Dollar Tree. 
I started by using this thick jute cord that I got from Hobby Lobby and some hot glue to tightly wrap the entire wreath form. I did go ahead and burn off all the little fuzzies, which also gave the cord a more rustic look. Next, I used one of these big garden picks that I got on sale for 40% off at Hobby Lobby. I used some wire cutters and cut the pick apart so that I had the two bees and the beehive separate. I did go back and cut the wire a little closer to the bees later on. To freshen up the bees, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the black sections. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color maize to paint the yellow stripes. And then I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the wings. I arranged the bees and the hive on the wreath, and once I was happy with the placement, I used hot glue to attach all the pieces. I used hot glue for this step, and everything is held up great, but you could use a stronger adhesive if you wanted. Then to finish up this little wreath, I used one of these daisy picks from Hobby Lobby and cut it apart so that I had six individual daisies. I placed three daisies on the bottom of the wreath right between the hive and the bee. I didn't use hot glue to hold these daisies in place. I just stuck the stem down into the jute cord, but you could use hot glue if you wanted. Then I placed the other three daisies right above the hive between it and the top bee, and this quick little project is done. I think this little wreath turned out absolutely adorable. I know it's super simple, but it looks so cute on my entryway table on the mini wreath stand I made during a recent thrift flip. I want to take a quick second to talk about today's video. It's part of the Hello Spring Open Challenge hosted by Tammy from The Rusted Willow and Ellie from DIY from House to Home along with their special guest host this month, Shannon from Shannon's Crafty DIYs. Y'all, all these ladies are absolutely incredible and have some of the best DIYs. So if you haven't checked them out, I highly encourage you to do so. I just know y'all love their channels. I'll link their channels in the description box below, as well as leave a link to the playlist so you can get even more spring decor inspiration once you finish my video. Now that I've said all that, let's jump into the fourth DIY. For this project, I used one pack of the small wooden wall shelves that come two to a pack, as well as two of the longer wooden wall shelves from Dollar Tree. I used a combination of wood glue and hot glue to attach all four of the wall shelves together to form a rectangle box. I applied the wood glue along the edge of one of the large shelves, making sure to leave each of the ends free of wood glue so I could apply a small dab of hot glue and place one end of the small shelves on top of the glue and held it until the hot glue set up. I then made sure to wipe off any of the wood glue that squished out from under the shelves with a damp cloth. For added security, I ran a bead of hot glue along the inside seam where the two shelves came together. I then repeated these steps to attach the other long shelf to the other end of the small shelf and then the other small shelf to the other ends of the long shelves. I used the combination of hot glue and wood glue to attach these shelves so that I would get that instant hold with the hot glue and then a longer, stronger hold with the wood glue. When using these two glues together, you want to try to keep them separate if possible because they do tend to deactivate one another if they happen to mix too much and then it's just a gooey mess. Next, I used some stainable wood filler to fill in all the holes in the shelves but this part is not necessary, which I'll show you why in a second. Once the wood filler was dry, I sanded it down so that it would be flush with the wood. Here I'm showing that the end pieces were a little wider than the side pieces, so I made sure the side with the hangover was facing down to be the bottom of the box. I cut out a piece of foam board that would fit down in the bottom of the box good and snug and flush with the bottom of the side pieces and placed it down inside the box. I flipped the box over and used hot glue to reinforce the bottom of the box along all four edges so that it was nice and secure. I also ran a bead of hot glue along the inside seams for added security. After the box was built, I used some Rust-Oleum stain in the color Weathered Gray and stained the entire box front, back, inside, and outside. Next, I used 16 of these brass furniture tacks that I picked up at Walmart. I used a pair of wire cutters and cut the ends of the tacks shorter so that they would not come through the inside of the box. 
I then placed the tack down onto the box where the holes were originally and used a small hammer to hammer them into the wood filler. This is why I said earlier the wood filler was not necessary and it actually created a problem with this particular stain and I had to sand it all off the wood completely or it was very visible. If you don't use the wood filler, you can cut the tips off the tacks and simply hot glue them onto the box to cover up the holes. I repeated this step until I had all 16 tacks in place and this box is finished. For the next part, I used a hexagon shape that I cut out of regular printer paper as a template and some scrap foam board from Dollar Tree. I placed the hexagon template onto the foam board and traced it out with a pencil and repeated this step two more times so that I would have a total of three hexagons on the foam board. I then took a sharp utility knife and cut them out and sanded around the edges to clean them up. I use Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the front, back, and sides of the hexagons. I then used some of the thick jute cord and used hot glue to attach it to the outside edge of each of the hexagons. I also used three wooden skewers from Dollar Tree and wrapped them with the same jute cord using hot glue to secure it in place, leaving just the pointed tips free from the jute. Next, I took this pill and stick wall decal from Dollar Tree and cut out both of the bees as close to the bee as possible and removed their little legs. Once I had the bees cut out, I placed one of the bees in the center of two of the hexagons. I also traced out this bee happy onto some regular printer paper and colored the back side with a pencil so that I could transfer it. I placed the words in the center of the last hexagon and used a sharp tip pen to transfer the letters onto the hexagon. Here is how it looked once the words were transferred. Next, I took a fine point black sharpie and filled in the letters. Here is how all three hexagons turned out. To turn these into floral picks, I used a sharp tool from Dollar Tree and pushed it through the jute cord to create a hole and then placed some hot glue on the tip of one of the skewers and placed it inside the hexagon. I then repeated this step to attach the skewers to the other two hexagons and these picks were finished. Next, I used three tall ball mason jars that I picked up on sale for 50% off at Hobby Lobby and removed the lids. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint two of the jars with two good coats. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color maize to paint the last jar with about three good coats. After the paint was completely dry, I used some sandpaper to distress the jars, paying extra attention to all the raised areas. This step is completely optional. If you don't like the distressed look, you could skip it. Here is how the jars turned out once I was happy with the amount of distressing. Next, I used just the outside rings of the three lids and wrapped the outside of each of them with a thick jute cord and burned off the fuzzies to give them a nice rustic look. Once I had the jute on the lids, I replaced them on the jars. To decorate these jars for spring, I used a daisy mix bouquet from Walmart and placed it inside the yellow jar. For the black jars, I used a dahlia mix bouquet from Walmart and cut it apart and split the flowers between the two jars. Then to finish up this centerpiece, I placed the three jars into the box with the yellow jar in the center and placed one of the hexagon picks into each of the jars. I decided to place the bee picks in the two black jars and the bee happy pick in the yellow jar. I know there are a lot of steps to this one, but I am thrilled with how this centerpiece turned out, and I can't wait to place it in the center of the table on my covered porch. Okay, on to the fifth DIY. For this project, I used one of these new decor hanging signs from Dollar Tree. I started by using Krylon Chalky Finish Antiquing Wax in the color Dark Vintage and applied an even layer to the slats on the front of the sign and not wiping off the excess allowed it to fully dry. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the frame. Next, I used these wooden letters from Hobby Lobby and picked out the letters to spell Be Kind. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the front and sides of the letters. I also used one of these bee pot perchers that I got on sale for 40% off at Hobby Lobby. I used some wire cutters to cut off the two pieces of wire that go over the edge of a flower pot. I wasn't fond of the colors of this bee, so I decided to give it a makeover. 
I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster to paint the eyes and the wings with two coats. I then used Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to paint the body, legs, and antenna with two coats. And finally, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color maze to paint the yellow segments of the bee using the bees from the first DIY as inspiration. Once all the paint was dry, I placed the bee on the left side of the sign and the words to the right of the bee. When I was happy with the placement of the letters, I used hot glue to attach them to the sign. I also used hot glue on the legs of the bee to attach it to the sign and this one is done. Again, I used hot glue for video purposes and it's held up great, but you could use a stronger adhesive if you wanted. I think this little hanging sign turned out so cute and it's going to go perfectly under my covered porch with the other bee decor. And last but certainly not least, DIY number six. For this project, I used this round wood coaster set from Hobby Lobby. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and gave the holder one light coat over everything except the top edge. I also painted the fronts and backs of all six coasters with a light coat, again skipping the edges. I used Waverly chalk paint in the color maze and painted the top edge of the holder and the edges of the coasters with one light coat. Once all the paint was dry, I took a sanding sponge and heavily distressed the coasters as well as the holder. This step is optional. If you don't like the distressed look, you can skip it. Here is how the holder and the coasters turned out once they were distressed. To decorate these coasters, I used this rub-on transfer set that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I cut out the image I wanted on the coaster and used my Cricut tool to transfer the image from the paper onto the coaster. I have to say these are some of the easiest transfers that I've gotten from Dollar Tree to use. So if you happen to see these on this brown waxy paper, pick them up. I wish I would have picked up a few more when I found them. These images almost look like stamps on this wood. I then repeated this step to add the rub on transfers to the other five coasters. Once I had all the transfers in place, I used Minwax Polyurethane Spray and gave the fronts and backs of the coasters and the holder a couple coats and this one is finished. I absolutely love how this coaster set turned out and again it will be going on my patio table under my covered porch for spring. Here is one final look at all of today's bee themed spring decor. I absolutely love how all these projects turned out and cannot wait to add them to my porch decor for spring and early summer. Which one of these projects is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. This one was a hard one for me this time, but I think if I had to pick, I would go with the bee wall planters. Don't forget to check out the Hello Spring playlist as well as the channels of today's wonderful host and guest host. All the links will be in the description box below. I want to thank each and every one of y'all for stopping by, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. It really does help me out here on YouTube, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around for a while. I have tons of fun projects on the way. I'll see y'all next time.